Hello everybody, this is another video, a very short one, it's just on randomizing textures on uh, similar objects. And uh, imagine you want to have those 5x5 uh, five five tiles on the floor being textured with the same material, but always with a different offset. So it looks more like random and not uh, like the repetitive stuff you normally get. So first of all, um, we have a material here that's uh, just, uh, it's just a, it doesn't even need the bump. So let's get this off. Diffuse layer, and this is a bitmap, and the bitmap is, um, well, it's just some, some photograph, some, some metallic surface, and it's been colored. And uh, this is not tileable, so you will see that it's being tiled when projected on these objects, first of all. And then again, it's also, um, it is also a problem that <coughs> when rendering, the offset is always the same. So, of course, nothing is more boring than having the same texture being placed the same way on each of those objects. And this is, of course, nothing that we want to have, okay? So, um, you might think about some other solutions, like uh, putting the texture tag on the cloner, and you would see that nothing changes, the same problem. Okay. Uh, he will use, uh, actually it, it is a difference, uh, he seems to use the um, single objects that is produced via cloning as one, oh, it's, it looks very, very similar. Um, actually, it, it's really the same. Okay, so, anyway, this is not a solution. Okay, so, what do we do? Um, first of all, before I start telling you how this works, I would like to uh, recommend you uh, two guys. It's Sock Gardener. I don't know who's behind that. And he's reporting a trick coming from Tim Clapham, and that is again the guy behind hellolux.com. He seems to be one big symbol for the guru. I just uh, learned about him, and I would like to get more into it. But first of all, um, this trick is seemingly coming from Tim Clapham. So I'm just the guy who tells you this trick, and I found it really useful. Okay, so this is why I made this small video. So how do you do this? First of all, I get the texture tag back to the cube, get rid of the font tag, and I think um, at the moment the only thing I know is that you can use this trick only on a bunch of objects, and on the texture tag assigned to these objects. Okay, so we can't use a cloner. We can make a copy of it, or we can, at this stage, just for a demonstration, can get rid of the cloner uh, pressing C. So we have uh, a lot of single cubes with the same texture tag, okay? And um, just to show you, this is not at all something to do with the trick I would, sh would like to show you, but how to texture uh, a, let's say, 25 objects with the same material. Okay, you just mark all those objects, you get to the assign tag of the material, and you drag all those um, objects inside. Okay, so this is how you can mass texture. Okay, so now we have to look for the right um, projection. Of course, cubic is um, the one to choose. And uh, now we have a similar thing like we had in the beginning. So when I start rendering the same procedure again, we have the same texture on the same type of object and it's uh, projected ever the same way. So again, this is something we want to get rid of. So how do we do this? Okay, now comes the trick. Mark all those texture tags and be sure to highlight offset U and offset V. You can press Command or Control. Just look that these two words are highlighted. Okay. Texture tags highlighted, words offset U, offset V highlighted. Okay. Now you replace the 0% by X plus R N V bracket 100 and closing bracket, okay? X plus R N D bracket 100 and again a bracket. 
And then you have to press Command or Control and return. Okay, so now you see, you see uh, multiple values in both of the fields, and this means, of course, you know this already, that when you click on one of those text to text, you get a individual value, and this is always slightly different. So this is what this formula x plus r and d in brackets hundred does. So how does this look? Well, it is different now. It shows us a randomized offset for the texture. But what is still slightly disturbing is that the tiling factor is a little bit too small, so we have borders in between. But this is, uh, of course, due to the fact that this texture, this bitmap, is not tileable, which I normally don't ever use. I always use Pixplant or something to <coughs> make tileable textures, so uh, you wouldn't have the problem then. But in this case, it's obvious that this is uh, too small. <coughs> so what we can do, again, don't forget, mark all those um, texture tags, and then you can change, for example, enhance the scale, double it. Okay, so let's run this again. Uh, does this look different? Well, it does look different, but it's not uh, perfect. Again, I think it uh, would be much better to have a tileable texture. Okay, just for the um, to show you the right a right example, a right result. Um, let's exchange this texture by some uh, tileable. Hmm? What is that? Some tileable texture, for example, like, 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 like. Let's use the concrete. Um, no, no, no. Let's look for another one. Let's look for another one. Bungie, bungie, bungie. Oh, well, let's take the Dirt map. And there was another one, sorry. Okay, let's use this one. This is tileable. And now we can try this again. So, as you can see, even now that the texture is not positioned always the same way, but we don't have any seams because this is a seamless texture. So you can see some um, spots that you can identify and they are not always in the same position and that is of course very good. So this was the trick and this, thanks to Tim Clapham and Sock Gardener, is something I learned only today and I'm very glad about it. Hope you like it too. Bye!